play chess, not checkers. It's about making decisions that will affect us as human beings. Look it up. They are attacking our most vulnerable citizens. The Project 2025 plan is not a game. Who is you? What you asking me for? What you need? I'ma give you what you wanna even the score, whatever you are. I ain't got no war over here though. Welcome back to another episode of Road to Williams. It's been a it's been a while. It's been a while. But I'm back. Today we're focusing on the political world. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna step our toes into it, um, specifically Project Twenty Twenty Five. We've all been hearing things about Project Twenty Twenty Five and how it's gonna affect a lot of people, especially the queer community, which I feel like is the main focus out of everything. So we're gonna dive into it, learn a little bit about it. And this is just to push your own research on it, to push more into learning more about what's being what's being at stake and how you can still have time to improve the campaign. Um, who, whoever you decide to choose, which if you're on my channel, <laughs> let's keep it a buck here. We're just gonna dive into it. This article is from glad.org. The title for it is Election 2024, Exposing Project 2025. Y'all know how I do. We going on this journey together. We're getting on this learning train together and learn a little bit more about it. What people are saying, and I want to hear your thoughts on Project 2025 and how the campaign run is going so far. You don't have to tell me who you're voting for, but you can say who you're thinking about voting for, um, if you please. I'm kind of stuck. I'm in. I'm in a between a rock and a hard place. We're like for who? I know we we we're talking about the Biden administration, and then there's always that battle between. Democrats and independent. Like, I think if those two came together, how much more power and strength and would they have? But that's just my take on it. I think they're stronger to come together. So let's see what they're talking about here. Then we'll we'll tap into other things. The truth about the right wing's planned takeover of the federal government. What is Project 2025? Project 2025 is a presidential transition plan and a government in waiting spearheaded and organized by the far right, the Heritage Foundation, and with 100 coalition partner organizations, many of which are well known for pushing anti-LGBTQ policy, legal efforts, and harmful rhetoric accompanied by Christian nationalism. The project is a 180 day playbook of regulations and executive orders that could be signed and implemented by the next president upon taking office. The $22 million effort also includes a 1000 page handbook, which it describes as the next conservative president's last opportunity to save our republic. It claims that its goal is to pave the way for an effective conservative administration. In fact, if implemented, Project 2025 would strip away rights and protections. The plan includes firing federal employees that oppose or insufficiently support right-wing policies, ending access to abortion and contraception, and eliminating protections for LGBTQ people. The document even calls for erasing LGBTQ inclusive language throughout federal agencies, such as the terms sexual orientation and gender identity, diversity, equity, and inclusion, gender, gender equality, gender equity, gender awareness, gender sensitive abortion, reproductive health, reproductive rights. Though not named, Donald Trump is the only 2024 candidate who would be poised to enact the project's mission. 
and the project's director has indicated he expects and hopes Trump will win the pre presidency. Who wrote Project 2025? The Heritage Foundation describes itself as a conservative think tank with a mission to formulate and promote public policies based on the principles of free enterprise, limited government, individual freedom, traditional American values, and a strong national defense. How LGBTQ military service, LGBTQ Boy Scouts and leaders, marriage equality, protections against discrimination for LGBTQ workers, LGBTQ parents, bans on conversion therapy, evidence-based health care for transgender youth, supporting bans on LGBTQ inclusive books, curriculum, and books about racism. Eliminating LGBTQ rights, eradicating federal funding for DEI programs, a married father, mother, and their children, and would eliminate any federal policies that promote LGBTQ equality or that assist single mothers. This one is says Project 2025's Lies versus Fact. Project 2025 Lie is that transgender people are an ideology and their existence is linked to pornography and the sexual and the sexualization of children. The fact is trans people are people, not an ideology. There is no factual evidence that transgender identities are inherently connected to pornography or the sexualization of children. Project another lie for the project 2025 is children suffer the toxic normalization of transgenderism with drag queens and pornography invading their school libraries. The fact is there is no such thing as transgenderism. Medical and psychological experts recognize that gender identity is a natural aspect of human diversity, not an ideological choice or belief system. Drag queen story hours are events where drag performers read age appropriate books to children incorporating themes of acceptance, diversity, and self-expression. They do not involve any pornographic content or explicit sexual material. There is no evidence of pornography invading school libraries. Libraries have strict policies and procedures in place to ensure that materials in their children's sections are age appropriate and do not contain pornographic content. Uh, another lie, is transgender health care for youth is child abuse. The fact is characterizing health care for transgender youth as child abuse is an rigorous lie that contradicts all credible medical evidence and expert concept. This is all coming together to an extent, right? Hold on. So with the project 2025, Trump is acting like he has no idea where this project 2025 is coming from. Project 2025, heard of it, is a, it is a 900 page transition guide for how to overhaul and then run the executive branch. It includes ways to force a nationwide abortion ban, among a lot of other things. It's understandable that Donald Trump would try to Claim he knows nothing about it, given that a nationwide abortion ban is so completely unpopular. But it's not convincing that he doesn't know about it, since many from his own administration are the ones who wrote sections of it, including Peter Navarro, Ben Carson, and Christopher Miller. And the think tank behind it, the Heritage Foundation, is one of the sponsors of next week's RNC. Joining us now, NBC News correspondent Von Hilliard, President, uh, former President Trump knows who the Heritage Foundation is. He knows who Ben Carson is. He knows who Peter Navarro is. I mean, these are people that serve in the administration and he's spoken about them and the foundation in the past. Right. They helped with his 2016 transition. Some of their top yeah. officials helped fill out their administration the first go around. He spoke at a dinner in Washington, D.C. that I was at with the Heritage Foundation in 2017. And I want to let you listen from another dinner of Heritage Foundation that he attended in 2022 because he was giving a tip of the cap to the very project that they were working on, Project 2025, before they ultimately published in early 2023. Take a listen. Our country is going to hell. The critical job of institutions such as Heritage is to lay the groundwork, and Heritage does 
such an incredible job at that. This is a great group, and they're going to lay the groundwork and detailed plans for exactly what our movement will do and what your movement will do when the American people give us a colossal mandate to save America. And that's coming. That's coming. That's coming, and it did, and it came out to be known as Project 2025. And so I think this is what actually caught a lot of people associated with Project 2025 off guard is because some of his closest team, including his own current press secretary, Caroline Levitch, was involved with Project 2025 before she joined the campaign. Stephen Miller, you know, you have folks like Ben Carson. And so now Donald Trump is understanding that when you release a 900-page policy book, there are going to be some parts of it that are going to be extrapolated by your opponents, the Democrats. And and that they're going to call attention to those parts of it. And some of them may not be popular with the majority of Americans. And that is where you saw Donald Trump now trying to disassociate and distance himself from I will the Project 2020. Also method. point out, because people say, and rightly so, that the president, former President Trump, is not the man he used to be. Um, I think that clip illustrates it decently when he was trying to say the word heritage um, and, and failing. Fun, fun. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, now he's denying that he knows nothing about it which reminded me when he did the same thing with uh, the kkk slogan the whole make america great again and i remember him lying about that saying he didn't understand why he was being associated with that so this is the article that brings up uh, by camilla the article is Trump fails to condemn KKK on television, turns to Twitter to clarify. On the Sunday morning talk shows, Republican res presidential frontrunner Donald Trump refused to condemn endorsements and said he retweeted the quote because it's a very good quote. The extended conversation about white supremacists came on CNN's State of the Union where Jake Tapper asked, if Trump would distance himself from an endorsement by David Duke, former Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. Duke has told his radio audience that voting against Trump would be treason to your heritage. Trump refused to condemn that endorsement or say he didn't want the support of white supremacists for crimes. I don't know anything about David Duke. I don't know what you're even talking about with white supremacy or white supremacists. I don't know. I don't know, did he endorse me or what's going on, he said. Else popped up, it's on glad.org as well. Is that, uh, it's an article and it says, President Joe Biden pardons thousands of LGBTQ veterans wrongly convicted under antiquated military laws that ban homosexual misconduct. So this happened this year, June 26th. President Joe Biden made a major announcement in honor of Pride Month. Using his clemency authority, the 46th president shared that he has pardoned the countless LGBTQ service members who were wrongly convicted for being true to their identity while in the military. So the statement, today I am writing an historic wrong by using my clemency authority to pardon many former service members who were convicted simply for being themselves. Our nation's service members stand on the front lines of freedom and risk their lives in order to defend our country. Despite their courage and great sacrifice, thousands of LGBTQI plus service members were forced out of the military because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. Some of these patriotic Americans were subject to court martial and have carried the burden of this great injustice for decades. As commander in chief, I am committed to maintaining the finest fighting force in the world. That means making sure that every member of our military is safe and respected so they can focus on their mission. This is about dignity, decency, and ensuring that in ensuring the culture of our armed forces reflect the values that make us an exceptional nation. We have a sacred obligation to all of our service members, including our brave LGBTQI plus service members to properly prepare and equip them when they are sent into harm's way and to care for them and their families when they return home. Today, we are making progress in that pursuit. This brought it 
a little closer to home of, of for me with Project 2025 because of what he started to put in place for. This is a timeline of all the things that Biden has done for the queer community. So April 26, 2024, the Biden-Harris administration finalizes rule to strengthen Affordable Care Act protection. First proposed in 2022, the latest rule incorporates protections on the basis of sexual orientation and improves pre-existing protections for gender identity, mandating non-discrimination in health care and insurance coverage for LGBTQ plus Americans. Um, countless Americans can now find solace in knowing that they cannot be turned away from health care they need just because of who they are or who they love. April 19th of this year, they finalized pro-equality Title IX rule. Following years of advocacy by HRC and partners to protect LGBTQ plus students, combat sexual assault and harassment, the U.S. Department of Education announced it has finalized a Title IX rule that clarifies the scope of non-discrimination protections on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity throughout educational activities and programs. October 16th of 2023, President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden, alongside inter entertainment superstars Shonda Rhimes, Lena Waithe, and Matt Bomber, joined together in the fight for LGBTQ plus equality at HRC's 2023 National Dinner. This year's national dinner featured keynote remarks from President Joe Biden and First Lady Joe Biden, as well as other special guests, including award-winning television writer and producer Shonda Rhimes, Emmy-winning actor, writer, and producer Lena Waithe, and Golden Globe-winning television and film actor Matt Bomber. In addition, the four transgender youth who organized Trans Youth Prom, Grayson McFerrin, Libby Gonzalez, Javi Shukumba, and Daniel Trujillo received special recognition for their efforts expanding trans visibility and justice across the country. The Biden administration, in terms of the, what they've done for the queer community, is trying to reverse a lot of the things that Trump's administration was doing. The Title IX article, the Title IX they're trying to reverse if they haven't tried to already, if I'm not mistaken. They're trying to protect, Title IX is basically a protection for the youth, the, the queer youth to be included in everything else everyone else is included in. Sexual misconduct, harassment, bullying, all of that is just adding queer people because what's going on is you're gonna notice how, what what's the main thing people always bring up when it comes to the queer community. Oh, I don't care what people do, long as they don't bring the youth into it or the kids into it. That's where I draw the line. That's all I ever see. That's all I ever hear. Title IX is basically a way for people to be like, see, they trying to get into the youth's head or whatever. So now there's an article I read where they're blocking it. Okay, yeah, so this is from USA Today. House moves to block Biden's Title IX rules supporting LGBTQ plus students, assault victims, because people aren't being held accountable. Next, I did a video on Next and how they are, they, they're not getting justice because, because they're not including queer people in this. They beat Next up. Next went to the hospital with their grandmother. They gave them some medicine to go home. The next day, they were going somewhere with their grandmother. And the grandmother said they just passed out. And they, they died right there. So my thing is, no one's being held accountable for the fight. Everybody's justifying the fight. Like, oh no, Next did this to themselves. When really it was hate rooted in that you know next was trying to defend another student and got jumped in the process and the result of their death is because of the attack they wouldn't have needed 
you know, every, you know, the media and people are saying, no, it's, they took too much medicine and blah, blah, blah. So what there was a whole nother narrative. And I'm like, this is why title nine is important for the youth. People want to keep pushing the whole, oh no, they don't, don't get the youth involved. When you're just telling the youth to suppress how they feel until they get old enough. Now your suppress suppression comes with depression, self doubt, insecurities because the family dynamic of now allowing them to be who they are, or express themselves, or just understanding who their kid is in general, instead of trying to box them in the society and push them along. I say keep being more self aware of what the policies are trying to put out there, there's some narratives where it's like, oh, well, Project 2025 is just an idea. It's not an actual thing. So let's not even too much focus. But I feel like that comes from people who aren't directly affected, you know, from it to it, you know. Maybe you're not queer, but you Black. Maybe you're not a woman, but you have women in your life. You have queer people in your life, trans people in your life. So you're you're everyone's affected because someone in your life is on that pot on that bill they want to pass, on that policy they want to pass. Everyone is affected, not just, oh well, I ain't got nothing to do with me. It's a selfish way to think and it gets us nowhere. So tying it all in, I was there at the women's march. What year was that? few years back, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Shout out to Luz. I went out to the Women's March with Luz. We drove out there to Madison, got some good food. And then we went to that march. I think we got, no, I think we went to the march, but then we got some food after. Then we got food first. It was one of the most liberating feelings to be in this life. Sometimes it can feel like you're alone in, your, in how you feel and what you think. How, what you think this world should be and you're like maybe I'm crazy and to be there at the women's march it was like no you're not crazy everyone is trying to push for a better world and it looks like what you want it to look like too and to be arm in arms with people with that in those moments when there's so much hate we give each other online uh face to face there's so much hate that and so much, you know, jokes we be passed around where it's like, no, people actually have sense and want to like push something forward. So remember that when you start to see a bunch of hate being pushed out. And if you don't know, learn because you're going to keep not knowing until you learn. We all know the bill project 2025 is who wants to strip away women's rights, queer people's rights, and ultimately black people. <laughs> You're like, bro, here we go. It always gotta be something. And so you can hear from other people, you ain't just hearing me. I also wanted to throw out there, this is gonna be dropping that day, the day of the Republican Party opens the first convention of the 2024 election cycle starting July 15th, which is when this video will drop. Um, it'll be in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It says the capital of a critical battleground state. <laughs> um, where are my Wisconsin people at? How y'all feel about that right there? <laughs> Wisconsin is an interesting state because it's definitely red. If someone ever tell you it's blue, they are not from there. <laughs> Milwaukee is like the melting pot, right? But you go outside of Milwaukee, it's segregated. Milwaukee segregated in certain, like for areas and things like that. It's definitely, Milwaukee segregated, but it's just a snippet of, the best way I could describe Milwaukee in Wisconsin is like the black sheep of the family. <laughs> and um, if you go anywhere outside of Milwaukee, and you're black, you need to really reevaluate your areas. <laughs> you go more north, you won't see us. <laughs> you won't. All right. You just won't. It's a whole different world out there. I done traveled all over Wisconsin. <laughs>
ain't nothing up there but a stadium we call the Packers, okay? Green Bay Packers, that's it. And you keep going, let's keep it popping. But I wanted y'all to know more of this is coming. Tell Father Venus he needs to hop on this mouth again. Go tell him. Tell him on the mountain, okay? <laughs> Join the conversation. Keep it respectful. Um, yeah, it's going to be at the Pfizer Forum. Ashley, how do you feel about that? I know the Bucks is, yo, Ace Boom Kumba, what are we doing? What's going on? Do you think Giannis will be there? Do you think Stephen A. Smith will be there? They're like, bro, you're wild. You're wild. It's not open to the public, private, whatnot, what have you. And then, so that's the Republican, that's the Republican National Convention. And then the Democratic National Convention is next door. Chicago, Illinois, that's going to be in August 19 through the 22nd. We'll do a video for that too. Bring some Democrat people on here. <laughs> because honestly, I don't know any Republicans. Maybe I do, but I don't know that they are and they are willing to tell me that. Uh, I don't have, I'm not going to sit here and be like, I ain't going to talk to somebody who's that. But when we're having a discussion... <laughs> on here. Let me know if you want to be on the show. And my independent people. We're not forgetting about Cornell West. I think Cornell should join the Biden administration. You guys are probably like, you're nuts. But I don't know. I think that's what he gonna have to do. Regardless of how they feel about each other, they gonna have to come together if you don't want to fight. Because sure, let's say we all vote, We people vote for Cornell West. It, that Will that be enough votes for him to surpass the Biden administration to be? No, no, no. They need to come together. That's the only way it's going to happen. If I could go to it, I would. But they're going to be in, the, in Chicago in August. So see, let me know if y'all are going to this. Now we're going to get to these videos. Now the BET Awards was last week, two weeks ago, around there. They have it every year. People claim they don't watch it no more. I wasn't able to watch everything this year. I saw clips, an important clip we're going to bring up. Um, I watched just the performances. I watched the Miss Lauren Hill with her son, YG Marley. I watched Glorilla perform, Sexy Red, um, <laughs> Will Smith's performance. Me and Ashley will do a review on the BET Awards. That'll be coming. But right now, I just want to focus on Taraji P. Henson because what's going on is I see I see what's happening. I see what's going on. I see it. I see it. What's going on is, you know how they were bringing up, and I'm for real not about to really talk about this, the whole Keith Lee and Taraji P. Henson thing going on. It's just a distraction. That's what people like to say. It's just a distraction. Y'all got distracted. Y'all say y'all woke. You got distracted by the Keith Lee and Taraji P. Henson BS, okay? It was a misunderstanding. They want to drag that out, put another two groups of Black people together to fight. You know, the supporters that were supposed to be his supporters who no longer want to support him. Now they think he would be on sides of the fence. It's just like, look, 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 look. That's not important. Let's go back and talk about when she was talking about Project 2025. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. And people made fun of Taraji for this because it, it's a fine line in between of people thinking that celebrities, in, included actors, athletes, all that, influencers, they feel like they should never have a say in politics when they're part of the driving force to make change, you know, through your art, through your voice, you can make change for millions of people. But there's an upside to it and a downside. They're like, you're great at what you do. Stick to that. And then let the people who's in politics stick to that. Everyone can have a voice. If you haven't seen my video with me comparing Malcolm X to Tupac and how their speeches both provoked change and they spoke about change and how their back backgrounds were kind of similar 
and how you can learn from everyone who's willing to put a voice out there. So if you haven't watched that, go check that out. But it kind of relates to this because Taraji is an amazing actress. We've seen her in countless movies, TV shows, to know that she's put in work to be where she is. But she's also always been outspoken in a, trying to uplift Black people. And um, she got slack for speaking out during the Color Purple run. Now she's getting slack for the Keith Lee thing and a little bit of the Project 2025. But we're going to put what she said out there and then y'all let me know in the comments. Time for us to play chess, not checkers. It's about making decisions that will affect us as human beings, our careers, our next generations to come. Did you know that it is now a crime to be homeless? Pay attention. It's not a secret. Look it up. They are attacking our most vulnerable citizens. The Project 2025 plan is not a game. Look it up. Donald Trump is officially trying to distance himself from Project 2025, the Heritage Foundation's far-right blueprint for a possible second Trump term. Trump claimed to know nothing about the group's plan and criticized that plan. T awards, and after I play her, you're going to understand why. Time for us to play chess, not checkers. It's about making decisions that will affect us as human beings. Look it up. They are attacking our most vulnerable citizens. The Project 2025 plan is not a game. Taraji P. Henson hosted the BET Awards this year. And, and Frank, I was um, struck by this moment because I don't believe it was um, scripted in there. Uh, but it, Project 2025 is permeate, is going beyond the political group chats, if you will. So much so that Donald Trump has moved to disavow it, even though Kevin Roberts of the Heritage Foundation says he regularly speaks with Donald Trump about it. And, and it is all about infusing Trumpism. Talk just about the, well, first of all, I think Donald Trump is lying. We don't know for sure, but he has been prone to not tell the truth about conversations he has had and what he does and doesn't know. But it is this plan. It is not hyperbole, right? It, people should take it seriously because it can be implemented. There, there's all this talk that, oh, people, people are being hysterical, but it, this plan could potentially be implemented if uh, an, an administration wanted to do so. I, I'm so glad Project 2025 is getting more popular attention because it needs to. It is essentially a plan against America and everything we know about the checks and balances in our government. You know, I think Trump's taken a page here with, with, Pro with Project 2025 from Putin's playbook, which is, you know, Putin uh, attacked our and tried to interfere with our 2016 presidential election. And when the special counsel inquiry caught him red handed, hey, these are these are your guys with the social media propaganda. We've caught them. We've indicted them. You know, the use the use of private citizens and oligarchs to do the propaganda within our social media allowed Putin that arm's length distance to say, I, I don't know. They, they're not they're, they're private citizens. So here we go again. We have the, the Heritage Foundation say, you know, with Trump saying, I don't, I don't know anything about this, but, you know, just like, I don't know who the Proud Boys are. Who are they? What do you want me to say about the Proud Boys? It's the same thing. So essentially, it's going to dismantle the checks and balances. What would that look like within, for example, my old agency, the FBI, DOJ? Now, instead of, yes, we know the president gets to appoint a new FBI director if he wants to, it's supposed to be a 10-year term, by the way, but guarantee Trump will, will find a new one who's loyal to him. He'll find a new attorney general who's loyal to him. But Project 2025 goes a lot further than that. It says even down the ranks now, they're going to remove civil service protections, and you can now have presidential appointees right down the floors of headquarters, of FBI headquarters and CIA headquarters. That means that the people who would rise up, report to an IG, say something's wrong, I'm a whistleblower, they'll be gone. They're gone. And so if you have prosecutors throughout the country who are loyal to Trump and get to choose and pick cases to open and close, you have an FBI director and several floors at headquarters who are loyal to Trump. You you now replace the general counsel at FBI, which I'm sure he'll do. The one person who can say we're not doing this now is owned by Trump and you have carte blanche to spy on and arrest anybody that the president wants to. Just let that set there for a second. 
because that's the that's the new reality, uh, Jill, that's being shaped by uh, the incoming administration as they as they claim and as they see it. You you have Trump saying, "I don't know anything about this. I have no idea. I've never heard of it," and yet we know that his own personnel from his pre prior administration are serving in, in leadership roles in this other members of his team are in, in leadership roles here. Uh, how, how should we, uh, certainly in light of what Frank just said, how should the broader community really be looking at this? Because I think, um, you know, that clip play, we played coming in, uh, what Frank is saying, this is really what this race is boiling down to. We can sit and fixate on how old Joe Biden is and, and worry about that, while at the same time you have Trump and, and Heritage laying the foundation for a dismantling of our, of our rights and the protections under the Constitution and fundamentally reshaping how our government, we were just talking about the, you know, what happened with the CIA and the FBI in the 1970s and how offensive that was to America. What Project 2025 wants to do is to make that an everyday occurrence throughout government. That is true. And I think it's up to the media, to all of us, to start communicating everything that is in Project 2025, because uh, Frank is right. It would abolish the civil service and make sure that everyone who works at the Department of Justice or any other agency was a loyalist to Donald Trump. Of course, it's ridiculous that he says he doesn't know about it. He clearly does. All you have to do is read who the authors of each chapter are. The author of the Department of Defense is his Secretary of Defense on January 6th, Chris Miller, who I had the opportunity to interview as part of iGen Politics podcast. And all you can say is, how could he have been the Secretary of Defense? Peter Navarro, who is in jail, wrote the part on trade. I testified before the Weaponization Committee next to Gene Hamilton who is from the Heritage Fund or the America First Foundation, who wrote the chapter on the Department of Justice. And his proposals are completely the destruction of democracy. Uh, it gives the president the total power to tell who can be prosecuted and who can't be prosecuted, something that has long been uh, the norm you cannot do. So we would be in serious, serious trouble. There can be no weaponization committee anymore because it's completely legal to weaponize. So Joe Biden, how can you investigate him for weaponizing the Department of Justice? Mm -hmm. There's nothing illegal about it because of the Supreme Court. And then you wouldn't even need the Supreme Court because Project 2025 says all of these things are what should be the government. That is something that if people knew it would definitely drive their vote. And I think it's up to us to start summarizing each of the many chapters to let people know how bad it is. Jill, to your point, I think we should just put up on the screen for people some of the former Trump officials who are linked to Project 2025. You've got Paul Dance. He's the Project 2025 director, former OPM chief of staff under Trump. Rick Dearborn, distinguished visiting fellow for Project 2025, deputy chief of staff for Trump. Russ Vaught, 2025 contributor, former OMB director under Trump. He authored the OMB chapter. Look at the people on this screen. Gene Hamilton, he authors the Department of Justice chapter. He's a former Trump DOJ official. He's the current VP of America First Legal, which is um, that Stephen Miller group that has been challenging all of these things the Biden administration is doing. My bestie, King Cuccinelli, okay, from the DHS. He authored the DHS chapter. He was a DHS official under Trump. Ben Carson, how are you going to tell me Donald Trump don't know nothing about Friday 2025 when he been out on campaign trail with Ben Carson? Who are they fooling? Just who? One more video. We're going to end it. But there will be more videos to come about this as we approach the election. We're going to get to a Republican senator and Roger Marshall at a moment, but that's not a Republican senator. That's Dr. Cordell West who joins us, the independent candidate for president, philosopher, activist, former Harvard professor. I thought you might like that. Thanks. Always good to have you on. That was, uh, that was a beautiful introduction. Dr. West, right. Yeah, a, we know that there are a lot of things without a Republican senator. All right. First off, um, there's a couple of things here that we could talk about. 
Civil Rights Act, I want to start before I get into Biden or anything else, because there was the event, I believe, has been delayed, but they were going to have an event today marking the 60th anniversary of the Civil Rights Act. And one of the headlines this is from Reuters. The Civil Rights Act victories are at risk. That's what leaders are saying on this 60th anniversary. What would you say about that? Guys, it's sad that we have to fight this battle every generation. You would think just being a citizen in an American experiment, people would be able to be treated as citizens. But we know, of course, when the country was founded, black people were enslaved to Africans. And then another 100 years of neo-slavery after Jim Crow. We had 12 years in the sun where we tried to create a multiracial democracy and a reconstruction, but we lost. So the Union Army won the war and white supremacy won the peace. But it's true. We have to refight this over and over again. That's why the John Lewis uh, Voting Rights Act was so very important. And it's sad that Biden and company couldn't push it through. Uh, Democratic Party, you would think, would have a deep commitment to this and fight to, 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 to gain access to uh, the passing of that bill. But it's, it's, it's a perennial struggle, my brother. There's no you know, doubt about it. What do you think of what's going on with Biden now? I mean, uh, I know you're running as an independent, but what, what do you think about what's been happening since the uh, debate to President Biden? One of the strongest areas of support, there have been many in the party, a lot of them behind closed doors, but even some publicly who say he should step aside. But the Congressional Black Caucus has been behind him. I'll put up a quote from Maxine Waters, but there have been a number of others that we could put up. People are talking about Biden's too old. Hell, I'm older than Biden, but I get up every morning. I exercise, work late hours. I take care of black people. Trump has told you who he is. He defined himself. He's no good, deplorable, lying, despicable human being, no matter what anybody said. It, it ain't going to be uh, no other Democratic candidate. It's going to be Biden. Congresswoman Maxine Waters, California. Um, what are your views on all of this? Well, you know, my brother, it's just sad to see the lies uh, just generated so quickly. It's hard to keep track of. And we, I mean, you know, Brother Trump's a pathological liar. We, we know that. And, and people accent that right of different ways. But the Democratic Party responds with its own forms of lies, its own forms of denial. There's no doubt that Brother Biden does not have both paddles in the water. Cognitive decline is as real as a heart attack. And what do they do? They create this protective wall around him, tell all the lies about he's as sharp now as he was four years ago. It's not true. This is why American citizens are so thoroughly disgusted with American politics, with this legalized bribery and normalized corruption. Both parties at this point, given the lies that have been told, are, not, are beyond a redemption. And where are the crucial issues? We're not talking about Gaza and genocide anymore. Right. We're not talking about poverty. We're not talking about 62% of fellow citizens who live every day paycheck to paycheck. We're not talking about the escalating wealth inequality. No, no. We're talking about the lies coming from Trump and the counter lies coming from the right. Democrats. The Democrats say we should be talking about those issues. We shouldn't be talking about Biden's fitness. But you think... No, but, they, but they're saying that in order so that they can hide and conceal Biden's condition. So you think you should just step aside? Oh, absolutely. And when they talk about his excellent record, you say, well, 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 wait a minute. Now, he had some decent moves, no doubt about that. But when you're a genocide denier and a genocide enabler, and when you preside over a country in which there's escalating wealth inequality and organized greed is still, is still running amok, that's not successful. If that's what successful is, what kind of experiment are we talking about? Before, America? before I let you go today... Um... How are you doing on ballot access? So we've always wondered about that. Yeah, the, I appreciate you always asking that. Because see, what happens is when you read it in the newspaper, they'll say, well, West is it four or five? Because they don't count the fact that the smaller parties are also part and parcel of our effort. So right. we got the Aurora Party in Alaska. We got the Progressive Party in Oregon. We got the United Citizens Party in South Carolina. We got the United Party in, in Colorado. We so got how many the states total? Party in Vermont. So we're up now to about almost 11, brother. We're going to make a major announcement beginning of next week. We're going to surprise a lot of people. We are bearing witness and being witness to truth. How many swing states? Michi you're in, you're in love. Are you in Michigan? I forget. Is that official yet or? No, well, we, we, we've handed it in. But, you know, Michigan can't make a decision until after conventions. Right, so okay. Official, then, absolutely. And then you got low-hanging states, you know, the, 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 the Texas and Louisiana and other places where you, it's just okay. a matter of money and, and, and small number of signatures. So that we are on the move, brother. We are going to go down fighting because it, no matter how much it takes, we're going to tell the truth, the conditional truth is to allow suffering to speak. We're going to talk about justice, which means 
fighting for poor and working people okay. here and around the world. Cornell West, as always, thank you, sir. We appreciate you coming on the thank show. You. Point of view. Good points. Great points. Let me know how you feel about this video. How do you feel the race is going to go? I need to know from my people. And um, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It's going to be more videos. Stay tuned. Stay alert. Send me some articles you think I should read. I feel like there was this one more I got to come back. There was something else I wanted to show y'all. In due time, I want y'all to be safe out there. You no longer independent. You focus on other niggas blowing you up now. No homo, even though I'm part of that town. I mean that group of alphabets y'all want to disrespect. See, kid, I'm on the mic. I do this with my fucking chest. Ha, let me take a breath. They don't even know what hit.